It is Monday, the 13th of June, 2016, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. Today we're going to review the changes and updates made for TypeScript.net v3. If you're already a user of TypeScript.net, there's nothing really to worry about. Basically, the changes have to do with how the distributions are served. For those who are new to TypeScript.net, it is a .NET-based, JavaScript-friendly code library that is built completely from the ground up using TypeScript. So to demonstrate the changes, we're just going to walk through, first of all, the process of using TypeScript.net in your project. So first off, we're going to start by npm init in a blank project. We need to use lowercase here. And I'm just going to kind of get through all this. No test command, no get charge, nothing, nothing. And good to go. Yes, it's OK. All right, so now it will give us a package JSON. I can then npm install typescript.net. Now here's where it gets interesting. Before you would install simply the entire package this way, but that would include all of the source files along with all the distributions. And that still is the case today that all of the source files come with this particular package. What I have done is remove the distributions because it creates more problems than it solves. And I've actually broken them up into different distributions on NPM. So for the majority of people, you're probably going to want to put UMD. And there's that. So now installed in your project is TypeScript.net. And notice that there are no other dependencies other than it. It also simplifies uh, the code deployment down to only the files that are required with the JavaScript and with the declaration files included. Now, how do you use this in your project? So the first thing you need to do, let's go ahead and create a new TypeScript config. This will initialize the defaults for you to get started. So at this point, I restarted WebStorm to ensure that it indexed all the files and the TS config JSON. So now what we can do is create a new TypeScript file called main. And we can get started by consuming classes from TypeScript.net. So in this case, let's say I wanted to consume a queue class where I was going to add a specific set of numbers to the queue. And there's the queue. And WebStorm automatically imported it for me. And there we go. Etc. So the important thing to note here, and this is what this video is all about, is that the changes to TypeScript.net have really simplified the importing and usage of the different classes. So in this case, you can see that there's the module name has been uh, aliased properly, and then you have the different subfolders that contain the individual class in the expected folder structure that you would expect from, say, .NET namespacing. Before, there had to be a source folder or a dist folder or something that segmented where the files lived. Now it's much easier, much simpler. And as you can see, it was pretty much effortless for me to consume and use a class in the library. For those of you that are Node users and are used to the more fragmented way of pulling in individual classes or modules or packages for each individual purpose, this is definitely a different approach where you kind of get an all-in-one library for most everything that you need effectively trying to mirror .NET Core. OK, so to wrap things up, I want to demo for those people who are familiar with Link how to access it now in Node. There is a Link property that exists on all collections. You can then go where? You can then also do things like order by. In this case, you can actually leave it blank, and it knows to order it in ascending order. Or, you know, order by descending, then by whatever. 
if you're familiar with Link and you're trying to write JavaScript code that utilizes Link functionality, this is definitely the way to go. It's fully typed, basically very difficult to make certain types of mistakes. Some of the more important features of TypeScript.net version 3 is properly using classes and types to limit certain types of functionality depending on what you're doing. For example, if I use enumerable, and WebStorm imported that for me from the link namespace, and let's say, for example, I create an infinite uh, enumerable. Okay, so var y equals. From that point on, it's a special type of enumerable. I cannot, it will not let me do for each because you cannot do for each on an infinite enumerable. It understands through class structure that this is not something that has this ability. Now, this isn't a perfect thing, but it's super useful when it clearly understands that you just basically generated an infinite enumerable. If I was to do for each, you can imagine it would sit there and loop forever, right? So we don't want to do that. That's why there's this class structure. Now, if I did say, for example, do uh, var z enumerable dot uh, range, and we'll say, I think uh, there's start zero, count step. We don't even need to put a step, but let's say two. Range understands that you have a limited set. So for each is acceptable. You can do for each whatever you want to do, right? Okay, so let's do one more. So promises are included with TypeShip.net. And we are going to demonstrate, let's say, for example, oh, here we go, I'm going to import the promise. And we're going to create a new promise.resolve. And we're going to say just whatever. Let's, let's use uh, numbers, OK? And I just want to demonstrate some of the awesome class structure helping that happens here. Now, from this point out, all actually automatically produces a special type of promise called an array promise that immediately allows you to call map and reduce functions on it. So what's great about this is with just a regular promise, it doesn't understand that the result is an array. But in this case, we know by calling all that we will be getting an array result, and that the promise that is returned is also of a class type that understands that it can do a map and a reduce. There's a lot more features and functionality here that we could go into, but most importantly, this video is to help people understand how easy it is to use this library. So for those people that have been using TypeScript.net. That's awesome. I uh, would love to hear more feedback from you. And for those people that are new to it, I hope this helped you to see how easy it was to consume classes and accelerate your development using TypeScript.net.